Hey, what's up guys? It's been a while since we've done a hands-on crypto video. I know many of you are interested in putting multiple cryptocurrency nodes onto one device, such as a Raspberry Pi. Previously, we have put a pre-search node, which is a decentralized search engine node, and a Mysterium node, which is a decentralized VPN node on the same Raspberry Pi. We have also installed a Flux computing node and a SC Prime storage node on two separate devices. But due to the limited computing power of a Raspberry Pi, we can't stack some of these nodes together. For example, a Flux node will have to run on its dedicated Raspberry Pi or a JSON device. Technically, you could install virtualization on some more powerful devices, but that's not what we're going to cover here. The customer will have to rely on the computing resource you provide to run their apps. If you run anything else on your device, you will no longer meet the customer demand. Well, certainly you can buy multiple Raspberry Pis and put them into a cluster case, but you will also have to buy the individual cases, cables, and worry about if there are enough ports on your switch, and that can be headaches sometimes. And that's why we're going to introduce this board that will allow you to run multiple nodes on one device without those headaches. And this device is called the Turing Pi 2. Let's check it out. Introducing the Turing Pi 2, the most advanced and portable server we've ever built. This cluster board unites four compute modules on a mini ITX motherboard. The Turing Pi 2 supports Raspberry Pi 4 modules, but it gets better. Add NVIDIA Jetson to run machine learning at the edge. And better, you can run these modules in any combination. With the two mini PCIe ports, you can add NVMe storage or expansion cards. And if you need even more storage, you can use the two onboard SATA 3 ports. Exploit our new form factor by building a home lab. Learn Kubernetes, Docker, and serverless on a bare metal cluster. Run machine learning apps 24-7. Self-host applications to create a private cloud or media server. Automate your home or business. The use cases are limited only by your need and your imagination. So currently, the Turing Pi 2 cluster computer has a Kickstarter campaign. It started less than a month ago and it's only got 8 days left. It has already gotten $1.7 million backing it up. And that says a lot of people are interested in this product. You can also find the link to this website in the description below and it's not a referral link. Currently, with the early bird discount, you're getting about $200 per board. I was actually super surprised when I received one of these testing boards, especially knowing some of my favorite YouTubers, including Jeff and Learn Linux TV, have reviewed this product. Most of them don't do crypto content, so I figured I would do one. So in this video, we're not going to get to the actual hands-on yet. However, I am going to talk about my plan with this board based on its unique designs. And I would love to get some feedback from the community to decide eventually which crypto projects I would put on this cluster board. So before we start, I am Modo Tech. I'm here to help you understand the technical fundamentals and gain hands-on experience in crypto and Web3 projects so you can be an early adopter. If this interests you, go ahead and give that thumbs up and click that subscribe button. This will help with the YouTube algorithm. All right, let's take a look at the layout of this board. Good news for a lot of people, this is a mini ITX board with an ATX24 ping. That means you can put it into a mini ITX case, and that's what I'm going to do eventually. And I will be end up using a regular ATX power supply, or I may be using one of my uh, mining server power supply with one of these Pico ATX power adapter. So on the board, you see four slots. These slots are SODOM slots, and the NVIDIA JSON modules actually use the same slots. But here's a problem. We're going to use these Raspberry Pi computing modules, and the Raspberry Pi computing module adapters look like this. The good news is the board also comes with a Raspberry Pi computing module adapter, so you will be able to just clip in the Raspberry Pi 4 computing module and then plug this adapter onto one of the slots. Also, that's really cool on the back side, you see there's a slot for SD card too. All you gotta do is to put this Raspberry Pi computing module on and you're click it, you hear it, and then click again. And now it's secure. And then you can plug it into one of these note slots. So we also have two SATA 3 ports, some USB 3 pins for your case, 
and then you got a bunch of GPIO pins and you also have a bunch of other pins here and you have two ethernet ports and that's controlled by a integrated switch chip. And that means each one of these nodes will be able to get its own IP from your router. Essentially, you're saving a bunch of cables here. You also have two USB 3 ports and HDMI port. And something to notice is that you do have two mini PCIe slots. For the mini PCIe slots next to node one, you also have a SIM card slot. This board supports 4G, 5G, even lower WAN for some of those helium fans. You got Zigbee 2 and of course Bluetooth. As we know, most nodes in cryptocurrency are there to participate in a consensus mechanism. And that means you will have to be able to keep a full copy of the blockchain. And most of the time, this file is not small. I'm gonna start with node four right here, which is the one on the left side, if you can't really see clearly. And my plan is to install a Bitcoin Lightning node on node four slot. And if you don't know what Bitcoin Lightning protocol is, it is a layer two protocol on top of Bitcoin. However, it is not a blockchain by itself. It is a layer two product that enables a bunch of payment channels that powers payment services such as BitPay, and strike. And what's awesome about the Lightning Protocol is it's extremely fast, it's secure, it focuses on privacy, it uses a Tor network, it's scalable. If you run a node, you can earn some Satoshis as rewards, and it's being adopted by many major services. And why? We have the golden standard here, Visa. We have millions of transactions going on every single day with Visa. For every single second, Visa can facilitate 76 thousand transactions. For Bitcoin layer one, you will be able to get maybe seven transactions per second. How are we going to expect to use Bitcoin as day-to-day -day payment method? Lightning protocol changes that. It can handle one million transactions per second. That is way more than what VisaNet can handle. So the thing about running a Lightning node is that I do have to keep a full copy of the Bitcoin blockchain. And currently the Bitcoin blockchain is about 400 gigabytes. And that means I will have to add on additional storage. So that being said, I will be using a two terabyte SSD. So some of you guys might be curious, why don't you put the Lightning node on node three slot then? Cause it has access to two SATA three ports. I plan to use node three slots for flux. And I'm actually gonna plug a JSON device onto node three. To launch a cumulus node, you will need 1000 flux screen. Currently that's about $700 worth of flux, I believe. And you will need at least four virtual cores, eight gigabytes of RAM, and you need 220 gigabytes of SSD with 180 megabits per second write speed. And the flux team already said later on, they're gonna enable this tier of nodes for storage hosting too. I would just wanna make sure I will be able to provide a more stable and lower latency connection with the SATA 3 ports comparing to the USB 3. So then we're going to node 2 slot. We can see here it doesn't have access to any uh, USB ports or the SATA ports. However, it does have access to this mini PCIe. What I could do is buy a mini PCIe to MBME adapter. But at the same time, if I just run the pre-search node, all I need is 16 gigabytes for now. So the Raspberry Pi computing module I'm using now, they do have 32 gigabytes of EMMC. So I should be all set. And maybe on top of that, I will be able to add a decentralized VPN too. So here's the last node. It has a lot of access. I haven't really figured out what to do with it. I was thinking about a regular Ethereum node or Ethereum Lite nodes, but that's not a validator nodes for Ethereum 2.0. It doesn't earn you any profits. Unless you're doing some dev work, it really doesn't make sense for you to have it. Plus it's got the access to a SIM slot and access to these GPIOs and mini PCIe. Or if I can't figure out what to do with it, I might just run a pie hole on it so I can route all the DNS requests through it. One thing I really like about this board is that when the board is powered on, you can actually hot swap out each one of these nodes without interrupting other nodes from regular operations. So again, this is the board. I'm super stoked about this cluster board and I can't wait to get this project started. Please leave a comment below and tell me what projects you think I should put on this cluster. All right, this is it for now. This is Modal Tech. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.